What's up guys, my name is Miguel, this is Rust Wars, and today we're gonna be painting Red Marines. You know which ones? Blood Angels. So buckle up brass liquors because it's going to be a bloody wild ride. After my previous video painting Imperial Fists, you guys decided that the next one should be Blood Angels. But before we even start putting any paints on the miniatures, we have to understand that the red that we're trying to emulate here is not the one that we have in nowadays miniatures. If you have been in the hobby long enough, you know what kind of red I'm talking about. This one. Left and right 2nd edition Warhammer 40k was hitting us with this beautiful oranges red. So my intention to paint my Space Marines more ever appropriate is to paint them in this particular type of red with modern paints. And I'm going to show you how I did it. So let's get to it and we're gonna need an orange. This is Magma Drought Flame, which works perfect as a base color for Blood Angels. I use a big brush, or if you have an airbrush, that is going to be also a very good tool to do this in order to paint this base color all over the place. Don't forget to paint the hands in the weapons as well. Once that is sorted out, we need to make a mix of Flow Enhancer, Contrast Blood Angels Red and Medium to create the next glaze. With the red shears that you can see on the screen, I create a glaze that I'm going to apply all over the orange. Once again, using a big brush is your best friend in this case. After I finish glazing the five marines, I go back with the big brush, making sure that there is not too much pulling in certain areas. Next, we're going to use Ultramarines Blue. Funnily enough, this is going to be the base for the black details in the power armor. We're going to focus here on the cables, the borders of the pauldrons and the joints in the armor. For the squad leader, we're going to paint the inside of the pauldron with this color. And a little bit of lore here. Blood Angels have their unit markers on the right knee pad. This is something I didn't realize until the very end for the Space Marines, but I'm going to have to do the same thing that I'm doing here. We have already a deep orangey red that is very simple to achieve. If you don't want to complicate matters, that's where you can stop. But I want to go a little bit further and I want them to pop. So we're gonna start doing some highlights. And here we're gonna use Troll's Layer Orange. And I'm going to use the air color. The reason for that is that this paint is already pre-mixed, very well diluted, and I think it's fantastic to have something that you don't really need to complicate and just get it out of the pot the way that you need it to be. You could have stopped already on the highlights or even without the highlights, but I'm going to take it a couple of steps further. I am going to give highlights with Ice Yellow. Ice Yellow it's very desaturated, but not as desaturated as it will be doing it with pure white. And it works very well with any of the colors of the miniature that we have used thus far. I'm going to do something else later, but as of now we're gonna focus only on extreme highlights on all the areas that we have painted thus far. Our brains are tricky things, and even though we are using a desaturated yellow, it looks different depending on the color that we are highlighting. On the red, it actually looks like a yellow, but in the dark blue areas of the miniatures, those look as if they had been highlighted with a gray. These highlights are meant to create volume by tricking our brain into thinking that the light comes from above. However, the color transition between the deep orange and this very pale yellow, it's a little bit too harsh, so I'm going to glaze it once again. I'm using here Angron Air Color, the clear variety, which is a very good glaze for red. And I'm very carefully picking up the highlights where I don't want them to be, leaving the ones that I want to be there. This glazing is going to mute down those highlights, but I'm going to be very careful not to touch the ones that I want to leave in pure ice yellow. And in the case of the areas that I painted before with Ultramarines Blue, we are going to use Basilicanum Grey. The Blood Angels in the Space Crusade have an assault role. They are the close combat specialists of the three marine chapters. Before the game starts, the Space Marine players have to choose equipment and order cards for their own squads. Although most of the cards are absolutely identical, there are three of the equipment cards that are unique to each one of the chapters. And in the case of the Blood Angels, we can see a focus on Close Assault. Close Combat is a risky business in Space Crusade. Armor is absolutely relevant when you are in Close Combat. If you are going to dedicate your squad to this role, then you have to choose your equipment cards very carefully. So the cards that debuff the alien player attacks and those that buff your own attacks are the winning combination for Blood Angels. 
With most of the power armor already painted, it's time to have fun with the tails. I am going to use Bad Moon Yellow Contrast to paint the Aquila Imperialis and the hair on the Squad Commander. Notice how all these areas had been previously painted with Ice Yellow to give it a clear base for the next color. Some of the areas of the heavy weapons receive the same treatment. With Eldari Emerald we are going to paint the helmet lenses and the wreath of laurels on the breastplate of the commander. Next I'm going to use Seraphine Sepia to give a wash on the yellow areas. I also use it to add color to the parchment decoration on the shoulder pad and a little bit of shading in the eyes, under the nose and the lips area of the face of the commander. Next I paint the weapons. I'm going to use Iron Breaker. As opposed to what I did with Imperial Fists, I'm starting with a mid-tone silver this time. And just like with the Imperial Fists, Cryptek Armor Shade is going to be used to add grime and a little bit of patina to the metals. Slightly diluted is going to add more shading to the Aquila Imperialis. And straight from the pot, we're gonna paint the pouches with this color, which were previously picked up with Ice Yellow. Then I highlight the yellow areas and the metallic areas carefully, just trying to leave some shading in the recesses. Thank you very much to the supporters of the channel over here who make sure that I have the extra funds to fuel my addiction to all the school miniatures. If you haven't done it yet, consider subscribing to the channel and leave comments below telling me what you think about this paint job or anything else about Warhammer in the old days. You can always buy me a beer or a coffee, but a thumbs up is always very welcome. Let's get back to the video. The end is near and what follows now is making those small details in the miniatures give them the personality that we're looking for on the gaming pieces that our players are going to be using in Space Crusade. With Vile Red we're going to paint the gems in the Aquila Imperialis and a few stripes in both the Plasma Gun and the Rocket Launcher. We are looking for the wacky colorful feel of the miniatures on 2nd edition so these small things actually bring that to the table. Subsequent shading and highlights are going to make these decorations really pop. I know I say that a lot, but yeah, that's exactly what we're looking for. We're looking for a little bit of poppiness. So don't be afraid of going lively and colorful here, because we are not painting Green Dark, we are painting Golden Era Warhammer miniatures over here. I have a tendency to include contrasting colors all over the place. It's up to you to decide what you're gonna do with these small details in here. But what you see now on the screen, I would strongly recommend that you do it. Because the commander has a very pale constitution, I recommend giving this small glaze over here. Notice how I clean up the chin and the nose, but leave the volupus pink glaze in the recesses. This is going to improve the contrast in the face and is going to make it look much more lively after we apply the Gilliman Flesh Wash. Then it is just a matter of giving some highlights and painting the eyes and that's already finished. So far I have discussed what type of equipment cards and strategies we should give to our Space Marines when we play with the Blood Angels in the Space Crusade. But what equipment, I mean what weapons should we give them if we want to be successful on our mission. As close combat specialists, I will choose the power fist and power sword combination for the commander of the unit. But unfortunately, this is a piece that is missing from my game. For the space marines, I will use the bolters so they can move fast and add the bayonets to those. And the heavy weapon that I think I will choose is the assault cannon. The assault cannon works in a very interesting way compared to the other two heavy weapons. When you roll to shoot with the Assault Cannon, you add the results of the two dice and then compare it against the enemies that you have around you. And then you can decide which ones you want to drop dead by deducting their armor from the score that you have on the dice. Each enemy killed reduces the total score that you have rolled on the dice, making subsequent attacks less and less powerful. But it gives you the opportunity to target any of the miniatures around the Assault Cannon, giving you an edge on deciding where to attack next with the other Marines. The last thing that I want to show you on this video is how I painted the power weapon on my commander. We're going to start with a coat of ethermatic blue and then we're going to paint with talisman blue these lines over here. After that we're going to repeat the process inside the previous lines with both azurman blue and celestium blue. 
The last thing that remains is giving a coat of very very diluted white in the inside of the blade and the areas that still have some of the athermatic blue. And after painting the bases and putting the transfers on the miniatures, they are now out of my pile of shame and onto the board game. Within the narrow corridors of a Space Hulk, keeping the distance with the Xenos is a luxury that you cannot count on. But this matters not for the Sons of Sanguinius. For where bullets might not do the deed of the Emperor, Blood Angels revel on thoughts of stamping their ceramide armor fists against the faces of the enemies of mankind. And if you want to see more Space Crusader stuff, watch this video next. And remember that my name is Miguel, this has been Rush the Wash, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Un beso, adios.